Last March, my Mays Mayor Francis Suarez brought in Art Acevedo from Houston as a surprise big name outsider to shake things up at the Miami PD. Then he stayed silent as uh, Acevedo shook too hard for some tensions mounted. At the end of this week, the mayor said the chief was too much of an outsider and had to go. Mayor Francis Suarez is here today for a closer look at what happened. Good morning, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, good, good morning. morning. Great good to morning. See you. We are good so morning, Glenn and Michael. Good okay. to see you both. Well, thank and you as well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, let's cut right to the chase. You brought sure. in Art Acevedo, big name. You called him the Michael Jordan of police chiefs, said he was going to reform the Miami Police Department. He made some blunders, said some you know, inappropriate things, angered some people, fired some uh, brass at the chief uh, at the department, uh, and he did not kowtow to Miami Commissioners Joe Carroyo and Alex Diaz de la Portilla. When he got in trouble, you sort of disappeared. You weren't there. And then finally, uh, Thursday night, uh, he was fired by the city manager and the commission. Uh, honestly, uh, Mr. Mayor, you did not cover yourself with honor in this affair. Where were you? I disagree with that, obviously, Michael. You know I respect you and your perspective and opinion, uh, but I totally disagree with that. I, I'm the mayor of the city. Uh, my responsibility is not to an employee. Uh, it's not even uh, you know to a partic particular political actors. My responsibility is to the residents of the city of Miami. And so when I made statements, uh, instead of going on camera, uh, which is appropriate given certain circumstances where you have situations where there's allegations of uh, you know in investigations, uh, allegations of, of you know criminal investigations for which there are arrests that are being made, uh, you know you have to be careful. Um, there are the possibility of litigation. Uh, you have to understand that you you ha have a good working relationship with the commission. I want to preserve that. Um, and so I'm, I'm careful with, with the words that I choose. Uh, and I, I always said at the appropriate moment, I would speak. I've given, I can't, I, I can't even count the number of interviews that I've given uh, in the last week, uh, including, you know, coming here on your show. Uh, you know, and, and listen, you, you, when we make a decision as a city, we have 4,500 employees. Every single employee that's hired, you hire them with the best of expectations. I think there's no one that can debate that the chief uh, had, was extremely qualified, you know, having been chief of three major departments and the president of the major cities chiefs association. And I think we all had high expectations and high hopes. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. And when that happens, you have to move on. And that's important too, because you know, no one and, and, and no situation is bigger than the city. And I think what's important is that the decision was made unanimously, which I think says that everyone agreed that it was time to move on and focus on our job, which is to serve our residents. Okay. Well, we're not going to move on just yet because we have a couple more minutes to really drill down here and mayor. Uh, what, what we saw go on in public is a process. What went on behind the scenes is perhaps more telling. And, and really the question in the public perception right now is, you brought in and the manager brought in this man with a specific intention and mandate, and that was to shake things up, whatever that meant to you. Uh, and obviously to shake up what was not being shook up already by insiders at the Miami Police Department, and he did. And so for the eight reasons that were enumerated for Art Acevedo's termination, the public perception is that the commissioners, who are far more powerful in this case, orchestrated his ouster because they did not like that shakeup. Well, first, that. first of all, first of all, that's your characterization of why the manager that, chose. That is public perception but, but as let, we let have me, seen let, it let, here let, at Local 10. Let, let me finish, Lana. Uh, that's your perception of why the manager brought him in. I think the manager brought him in because he was the most qualified candidate to do the job. Okay, I don't want uh, to you know. interrupt you, Mayor, but I do want to, because we have such a short time together, I just want sure. to read you something out of, out of the Chief's memo to you. Um, he said that verbatim, recruited by you and the, may the mayor and the city manager, both of you indicated there was a need to reform the Miami Police Department and to change the culture of the agency. Um, is that what you told him or did he misunderstand? No, I think, listen, every single department, we have 26 departments, every single department uh, needs improvement. Uh, you know, I'm the kind of person that wakes up uh, wanting to improve my city in the way that it functions every single day. So you can say that equally about every single department. You can say that about, you know, my office, the city manager's office. We wake up every day trying to reform our city and make it better and stronger uh, as a vehicle uh, for prosperity for our residents. So I, I don't think there's anything particularly earth shattering about those words. Um, every single department needs to improve and we're always going to be focused on 
finding people that can make our departments better. So I, I'm not so sure that I understand why that's uh, problematic. What yeah. is the culture of the agency that you would like to see improved? I mean, I, maybe those specifics are important. So mm -hmm. can you share those? Sure. Well, I think number one under, you know, as the manager said, part of the problem was that under the chief, the culture became somewhat toxic. Um, and I think now, you know, what we want to see is stability. We want to see, um, f frankly, our 1,400 officers, which are phenomenal officers, men and women in our department. We want to be able to focus on their work work and on things that are important like our homicide rate like our part one crime rate um, we're one of the few cities in america this year uh, where our homicide rate is actually below last year most big cities in america uh, they're up and you know one of the things that we did with the commission in unison was we approved a budget of over a billion dollars unanimously um, where we added more police officers to our force we increased funding for police officers so it's important that the political people get along, uh, that they work together unanimously, That's that has to be preserved. And no one employee is more important than that. I've gone through this, this is the third time in my lifetime that I've gone through this one. Warshaw, you know, my father, uh, we're disagreeing when Exposito, who was Tomas Regalado's handpicked chief, uh, you know, was calling him a crook and saying that he was beholden to the yeah. gray market machines. So, you know, this is an, it's unfortunate that we're here. Yeah. We have to move on and we have to focus on what's important, which is serving yeah. our residents. Uh, Mayor Suarez, for what it's worth, I was there 20 years ago you when your father, you know, I had know with you, you Joe Correo and Don Warshaw. I know. I know all about that. You know, here's, I know you do. here's something, Mr. Mayor, that I, I want to ask you about. In his memo to you and the city manager, uh, Chief Acevedo said that there had been improper interference in personnel decisions uh, by members of the commission, three commissioners, that they had improperly tried to use police and city code enforcement officials to punish their political enemies. Now there's supposed to be an investigation into that, but it's going to report back to the commission. So how serious can this investigation be? Well, I think there's, you know, first of all, anytime there's any allegations made, they should be investigated. And certainly, um, you know, the commission wants to uh, create its own investigation on a variety of subjects, which they have the charter right to do. But I think, you know, I, I, listen, I'm not a prosecutor. I'm not someone that can look at those allegations and determine whether uh, whether they have merit or don't have merit. Um, and the chief has every right to, uh, you know, make the allegations that he made, maybe not in the in the way that he did it, uh, but I think it's important uh, that any, you know, uh, allegations of, of of any misconduct are investigated and we'll see whether, whether any investigatory agencies do that. I have not been informed that any investigatory agencies are in fact investigating any of those allegations. And if, it, you know, if I did and, and was, you know, was, was told that I couldn't talk about it, I obviously wouldn't, but I can tell you that that has not happened. Okay, Mayor, we're gonna take a quick break, sit tight, and uh, we'll pick this up in about two minutes. Thanks. You got it. Okay. On This Week in South Florida, we are happy to be speaking with Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. Mayor Suarez, uh, early on in his tenure as chief, um, Art Acevedo did and said some things which called his judgment into question uh, at a, a, a roll call meeting of police officers. You know, we talked about the Miami Mafia, a phrase which, of course, was associated with Fidel Castro, he later apologized for that. He made some personnel changes, which really angered a lot of the some uh, ranking command staff at the police department in that period. Did you ever take him aside or call him up and say, Art, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, let me give you my advice. You know, you are not making a friend. You're not doing the right thing. It's not the, the kind of chief I had looked for. Did you do that? Many, many, many times. <laughs> That's all I can say. Many, many, many times. And what did he say? Well, I mean, you know, in the case of, of that statement, he obviously apologized uh, for it uh, after the fact, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, in some cases didn't listen, um, continued uh, to do uh, some of the things that, you know, myself, the manager and manager sort of, indicates that in his memo where he says, you know, I've given you advice that you have not taken, um, and now I think you need to take the advice. And it, it changes from advice to a directive. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, uh, that advice and those directives were not heeded, which is why we were where we were. 
So the actual termination was for eight different points. Al, we touched on a couple of those outlined in the manager's letter. Yep. And then the process on Thursday was a quasi-judicial hearing that That's was right. supposed to end with the votes of five commissioners, which it did. And, and at the very beginning, at the outset, Acevedo's attorney said they would not be participating with the defense because this was, in their words, a preconceived outcome. And in the end, it was the outcome they expected. But the eight points in the memo and all the evidence brought out in that hearing had already been through a thorough hearing two weeks ago by three commissioners who built that case over the course of a two-day hearing. Was this, by that 3-2 whatever vote, three being the majority, was it a, a preconceived outcome? Well, it wasn't a 3-2 vote. It was a 5 to nothing vote. Well, I'm, no, I'm saying it, was, it would have been whatever the three to two, four to one, five to zero, as long as the three people oh. who had oh, built the case against him were voting to oust him, it was a done deal. So was well, that a preconceived it, it was. It was a unanimous vote, meaning even the commissioners that were not referenced in the memo voted, uh, in, you know, voted to support the manager's rationale and my thinking that it was time to move on. So this was a unanimous decision of our government. You have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, five commissioners, a manager and a mayor that sometimes don't agree with each other, all agreeing that it was time uh, right, to move Right, but forward. Mayor, my, my, question, so, my question was the three of the commissioners had already built that case two weeks ago, clear in their intention that they did not want them there. And then two weeks later was the actual vote to oust him that Acevedo's attorney called a preconceived outcome. And my question to you is, does it look to you like it was a preconceived outcome? Absolutely not, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why, because I was a commissioner, and I remember being a commissioner and sitting trial as a judge in a very similar circumstance. In fact, the then police chief, Miguel Exposito, actually went into court to try to disqualify me as a judge, because prior to the hearing, I had made statements uh, as you know my role as a commissioner uh, that were not favorable to his tenure. We have a dual roles as commissioners. And when I was a commissioner, it was a dual role. You have a role to be a public policymaker and to talk about things. You guys obviously want me to talk about things constantly uh, and, and on camera. So you have a role of, of giving your opinion, giving your perspective and running, helping run the city. And then in other uh, moments, given the charter, your role metamorphosizes. You have, you have to sit as a finder of fact, which is why I think the commissioners, more than one, uh, we're very adamant about having the chief put on a case and adamantly ask the chief specifically to, to that they wanted to hear from him under oath and the chief decided not to do that which frankly surprised me i thought the chief would uh, mount a defense i thought the chief uh, would speak in his defense uh, particularly since the manager had not allowed him to speak to the press for a period of time so i i, I really thought we were going to hear from him we we're going to hear from his defense and i think that frankly makes it much more difficult for him to sue the city going forward yeah. Mayor Suarez, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks, there were a couple of commission meetings where particularly Commissioner Joe Carroyo just sort of went off on Art Acevedo, said he ought to shut up, he ought to come down, arrest him in the commission chambers. He berated him. He showed a video of uh, Acevedo at a fundraiser in Cleveland in an Elvis uh, costume, you know, and ridiculed him. Uh, do you think that Commissioner Corio, uh I mean, everybody's got free speech rights and he is a city commissioner. Did he go too far? Well, he's not only a city commissioner, Mike, but he's a city commissioner up for election, as I am a mayor that's up for election. Uh, and I want to remind the voters that on November 2nd, there is an election for uh, our voters, our residents, our bosses to choose their elected representatives. And so uh, what's interesting is, is what are the voters going to choose who are the ultimate deciders? They're, that's our jury, right, in terms of our job performance and the decisions that we make. And so I think we have to respect the democratic process that people are chosen democratically uh, to lead this city, whether we like them or not, or whether we like every decision that they make or don't like every decision that they make or every their style or whatever. You know, and, 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 and that's what's important as a mayor and as commissioners for us to forge a path forward, getting along to make sure that we have the agenda of the residents top of mind. And I think, frankly, this situation, as unfortunate as it was, uh, became a major distraction. I can tell you it was a delaying a variety of other important things that we had to do. And it was time for us to move forward in a, in a different direction. Yeah. And we've done that. And, and, and we did it in a unified fashion. I know that bothers some, uh, you know, pundits that bother some in the press, not, you know, present companies 
when excluded. And it bothers, uh, you know, some former politicians and current politicians that we were actually unified and were able to make a tough decision together and move forward. Mayor Francis Suarez, I can't speak for all press, but I will tell you that we just kind of question authority. That's what we do. <laughs> Nothing personal you. to and anyone. You, and you both do a great job of it <laughs> for a long time, and that's why I respect you so much. And we appreciate, we appreciate you coming them. on with us Thank today. Thank you, Mayor Suarez. Anytime. Thanks so much. All right.